In this video, we are going to have a look at Be Quiet's Dark Rock 4. We are going to have a look at what's in the box, how to install it, how it performs, how it sounds, and we will go over the good and bad, cause there is quite a lot of good, but also a, a tiny bit of bad. So this is the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 out of Be Quiet's high-end Dark Rock line, or just the Dark Rock Pro's little brother. Being a single tower cooler at 159mm height, 136mm width and 96 depth, I would still describe it as mid-sized, but maybe a bit high. By using 6 copper black tinted heat pipes, this cooler is supposed to be cooling up to 200 watts TDP. To get all of that heat out, Be Quiet includes one of their special sized 135mm silent wing fans. But as these are not part of Be Quiet's separate sold lineup, I wasn't able to find out any more than just that the fan is spinning at 1400rpm and that it is yelling at 21.4 dB. But because I already know how the benchmarks turned out, trust me, it is, it is very much alright. In case you want to install another 120mm fan, Be Quiet includes two sets of fan clips in the packaging. For the rest of the box, we got the usual stuff, AMD and Intel mounting gear, some thermal paste and a easy to miss but highly appreciated Be Quiet screwdriver. And let me just tell you, I already have one of those out of my Dark Rock Pro 4, which I bought like two years ago and it is my daily screwdriver since then. It, it's the small things like these that just stick with you. For the compatibility, you are able to install this black chunk of cooling power on top of AM4, AM3 and so on until FM1 on Team AMD. Or LGA1200, every 1150, 2011-3 and 2066 on Team Intel. When it comes to the installation method, it's the standard Be Quiet procedure. For the Intel consumer sockets, we need to use the included backplate and shove the Intel screws into the appropriate hole based on the socket with a washer on the other side. After positioning it on the socket, we need to screw in the spacers into the backplate followed by the mounting brackets on top. Over on AMD side, it's a bit easier. Just remove the black retention brackets place the spacers with the AMD mounting brackets on top and screw everything down. Just make sure that the brackets are pointing away from the socket. From here on, it's the same procedure for both sockets. Put some thermal paste on the CPU, position the cooler on top after adding the mounting bridge and making sure that it sits flush and screw everything down. The fan has to go on the side with the rubber rails going from top to bottom, so just position it and clip the fan clips in. Now, already at this point, I would wanna go over a couple of things that could definitely be improved. I do not see any reason why that mounting bridge is not permanently attached to the cooler. On every socket, you need to use this exact bridge, and even though Be Quiet calls this easy installable, Believe me, that thing will shift, it will lift itself cause you are not a 100% accurate robot and a bunch of other things will happen which will make you furious. And I'm not even talking about installing the cooler on a standing motherboard, Th that, that's just pure torture. Now I do want to point out that there are many installation methods out there which are way way worse, but permanently attaching the bridge to the cooler and attaching the screws to the bridge with like a, a catch mechanism would make this a perfect installation experience. The other thing I, I want to talk about are the fan clips. Now, I don't know if and, and why Be Quiet tried to completely hide the fan clips, but there is nothing to hold on to if you want to remove the fan at some other point. I've seen reviews where people shove things through the fins to like, like pull the clip, but I, I personally find it easier to just press on the fan and pull the clip out on the, on the fan side. Now, both of these ways are, are no, in, in no way great, but at least my way is not scratching the cooler and the clip can usually be bent back if it happens to bend. So I don't see this as a huge issue. It is annoying, yes, but fixable with a bit of bending. Or be quiet, could just add something to grab. Okay, with the bad stuff out of the way, let's go to the really good stuff, performance. We tested the Dark Rock 4 on top of our usual 3900X locked at 4.36 GHz and 1.4 V V-Core. Under full load, this little boy was able to keep the CPU at stunning 54 degrees above ambient, which is just 1 degree C behind the bigger dual tower and fan Dark Rock Pro, and far above every other single tower air cooler we had so far. Reducing the fan speed in 10% decrements reveals that the Dark Rock puts up a really good fight. 
we decided to compare it with way bigger coolers as comparing it with any other single tower coolers just was kind of sad for the other coolers. Here we can see that although it has only one fan and way less fin space, the Dark Rock is always just a degree or two behind its bigger pro counterpart, while also reaching the thermal throttle moment at the same 30% fan speed. Normalizing these numbers by noise generates this graph. Here we can see that although the Dark Rock is not able to reach temperatures as low as the Freezer 50 or Noctua NHD 15, which I never assumed it would, it is still able to outperform the Freezer 50 by noise, when you want to reach a temperature level of 54 degrees C or higher. Here are also some sound comparisons. So where does this leave us? Well, honestly, impressive. Considering the thickness and the fact that this cooler comes with only one fan, I was quite shocked that it was so damn near the bigger Twin Tower Pro model. Looking at performance on an absolute level, this is by far the best single tower cooler we've had so far and it is absolutely able to keep any consumer grade CPU cool. But the most shocking aspect for me is noise. And that's not even for like this product specifically, but for like every be quiet cooler in general. These things are so freaking quiet. I had it running for like two hours at full blast right behind me because I forgot I was doing benchmarks because I couldn't hear it. it it's ridiculous. Okay, so what's good and what could be better? Performance, top. Noise, top. Build quality, top. The installation method could be better, as I said, permanently attaching the bridge and screw to the cooler would make it just heck of a lot better. If you need the ability to, to like wiggle the bridge around for like manufacturing tolerances and whatnot, you could even add something like a spring in the middle that, that should kind of make it. And of course, the fan clips. I mean, the, there's just something missing here. On the price side, it sometimes shocks me how big the gap between Europe and the US are. Here I can get a dark rock for around 55 euros, whereas on Amazon US it is going for 75. And I do think that 75 is a bit much. For $20 less, you could get a Freezer 50, which can go way deeper in terms. But here in Europe, 55 is a very affordable price. But other than that, amazing cooler. As, as of right now, with the benchmark list that I do have, if anybody asks me what mid-sized or budget-friendly or very quiet cooler he should get, I will point them to this review. Okay, this should be it for the Dark Rock 4. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, make sure to leave a like and your opinion in the comments below. And make sure to be subscribed because we have still a ton of reviews coming. But in the meantime, have a look at the Freezer 50 review. It may be a bit louder, but as I said, it can go way deeper. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.